Hey, I'm Sven from the Beam Music Project. In the last two lessons we created a simple sound generator plugin and we learned how data transfer using Atom works in LV2. Today we will combine both to create a simple MIDI synthesizer plugin, a sine synth. The new plugin will play sine waves upon MIDI key events and is based on my test tone. But how do these MIDI events look like? A MIDI message consists of a message dependent number of bytes. The first byte, the status byte, defines the type and the total length of the message. The status byte is divided into two 4 bit parts in the case of the most interesting channel messages. The first part is a message type, the second part is a channel number. The other bytes, the data bytes, are used for parameters like node number and velocity. These MIDI messages are wrapped into an LB2 Atom event with a timestamp. Enough theory, let's start programming. Once again, we start with copy and paste the My Test Tone folder and rename it to My Sign Synth. We also rename the My Test Tone files inside the folder to My Sign Synth and remove the .so binary. Inside the manifest, we rename all My Test Tones to My Sign Synth, and that's all. The same replacement inside the My Sign Synth TTL. But now we should think what we need. As we learned in the Atom's URIDs and URIs video, we need the Atom extension for the definition of Atoms and an Atom port through which we can receive MIDI data, the URID extension to assign a message with an ID, the map feature to convert an URI to an URID, and of course a MIDI extension. You can find the URIs or the prefixes for the URIs for the extensions in the LB2 specifications. Go to the API of the respective extension, let's start with Atom. Scroll down to the definition of the LV2 atom prefix, copy the URI and paste it as at prefix atom. And do the same with the prefixes URID and MIDI. The prefix definitions themselves don't do anything, but be sure we will need them. Now to the plugin metadata definition. We can keep the oscillator plugin and the version number and the optional feature, but we need map as a required feature. And its predicate URI is defined in LV2. There! So we can type for the predicate LV2 colon required feature. And we need an object URI for map. And map is defined in URID as it converts URIs to URIDs. There! So we use the previously defined URID prefix and type URID colon map. Now the door knows that it must expose the map function to the plugin as a feature. Next we need a data input port for MIDI. So we can insert a port by insertion of a phrase in squared brackets. You know this stands for an anonymous subject. And type LV2 colon input port comma. And now we have to look for an atom data port URI in the Atom specifications. And there is Atom port. So we can add the object URI Atom colon Atom port. And this Atom port should also support MIDI data. So we take a look for the predicates provided in Atom. And there is supports. And there is already an example telling us all we need. So we can copy and paste it, set the port index to zero and call it MIDI in. We can keep the audio out port, we only need to add up the port number. Then let's think about what controllers we need at least. The frequency is now controlled by the MIDI key number, so we don't need it anymore. The level can also be controlled via MIDI, via the velocity parameter. But it's worth to keep an additional control about the level, so we keep this one. And we need envelope controllers. Attack, Decay, Sustain and Release, ADSR, to fade in and fade out. Otherwise we would get painfully hard clicking on and off sets. So we renumber the first control port and call it attack. The default attack time will be 0.1 seconds. And the range between 1 milliseconds to 4 seconds. You can also set the lower limit to 0, but then you will produce clicks for sure and you can't use the logarithmic scale anymore, as the logarithm of 0 is not defined. Now to the unit, we look into the unit specifications, there's S for seconds, so we can use it. We copy this block and use it for decay in the same way.
And also for the sustain, but sustain is like the level and not a time. We set the default to 0.5 in the middle of the range of 0 to 1. It doesn't have any unit and will not be a local rhythmic. And for release we paste again through attack block and adapt the parameters. Also adapt the index for level and that's it for the plugin turtle file. Now to the code. What do we have? We've got a MyTestTone class with connect port and run. Run contains a sample loop where we synthesize the sine wave and proceed. We've also got the 7 core functions, a descriptor struct and the C interface function. Now we will rename the class to MySignSynth. Run will now contain a MIDI interpreter which stores the MIDI keys. So we will need a key class. And this class will not only take up the MIDI key properties, but we also move the sine wave synthesis and proceed into it. The loop will get an own method. So let's start with the change of all experiences of the class name to MySignSynth. And as we will use the extensions Atom, URID and MIDI, we can blindly include their header files with the suffix .h. It's easy for me thanks to the auto-completion in my editor. I will also include the utilities from the LV2 core. And as I've also seen a utility header in the Atom folder, I will also take along this one. Both utilities contain functions and macros, which will make our programmer's life easier, as you will see. Now let's go to our plugin definition. We have to store the address of our MIDI input port. Atom port store atom sequence. Take a look into the Atom API to find the right type. There it is, LV2 atom sequence. Or a pointer to it, of course. Input ports can be marked to be constant as we don't change its content. We keep out your out PTR and declare const float pointers to our ADSR control ports. Attack PTR, decay PTR, sustain PTR and release PTR. And add const float asterisk level PTR. Individual declarations of control ports are not the most elegant way, especially if you have got a lot of controls. It's much better to maintain an array of ports than individual ports. Array declaration in C and C++ is done by the type of the array content followed by the array name and the array size in squared brackets. But we will leave it empty for the first. Later we will get access to the array members by the respective members index number. Therefore, it's a good idea to store the numbers in an enumeration. Enumerations are defined by the keyword enum, the enumeration name and the enumeration body. The body contains a comma-separated sequence of enumerators with its optional value assignment. And if there's no explicit assignment, then the first enumerator will usually get the value 0 and the following are increased by 1 each. But for the ports, I will always use the explicit assignment to get sure. So we can type enum control ports, curly brackets, control attack is 0, control tk is 1, control sustain is 2, control release is 3, control level is 4. And we define the number of controls, control nr is 5. Now we can put the number of controls, control nr in the squared brackets of our array definition. And of course we can define enums for all ports. So we define an enum port groups with port MIDI in is 0, port audio out is 1, port control is 2, so port control plus the control ports number is the index defined in the TTL file. And once again a number of ports, port NR is 3. In the constructor we add the initialization of the MIDI in PTR as null pointer. And we do aggregate initialization of our control PTR array with null pointer in curly brackets. As mentioned before and declared in the TTL file, we'll need the map feature. Features, these are feature URIs and their corresponding hospital-rated feature addresses as pointers, are passed by the door to the plugins instantiate function. Therefore, we need to forward them to the constructor. So we copy this parameter from instantiate to the constructor declaration and definition, and pass the features too. Now we should do something with this parameter, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense to pass it. We will take a look into the LV2 util heater of the LV2 core. There is a very useful feature query function with an example with the features lock and map. You should also read the detailed description. We copy the example and paste it into our constructor body. A bit of cleaning, we don't need the lock feature, but map. 
The pointer we need will be stored in map. The parameter true is for a required feature. Null at the end is to signal the end of the parameter list. The function itself should return a null pointer or a C string with a missing feature if an error occurred. I move the declaration of map to the class, not necessarily required, and do the initialization in the constructor initializers. Now we check if the required map feature is missing. Then the constructor should be aborted. This can be done with the keyword throw. So new and instantiate will not create an instance and the program will be terminated if map is missing. This is something we can surely improve in later development. Now we can call the map function from the map feature struct pointer we got. This function will return the lv2 URIDs of the URIs we request and we should store them. The best way is to store them either in a struct or an array. So we declare a struct with the only lv2 URID we need, midi underscore midi event, and also declare a class member for this struct. Then we can assign URIDs dot midi underscore midi event with the URID returned by the map function of the struct where maps points to. Don't get confused by the double names. The first map is for the feature struct, the second one is for the function. And we have to pass the map handle, as this is a C function and this is a way of object-oriented programming in C, and the predefined URI for MIDI event as a C string. Now to connect port. We only have to adapt the switch case statement to the new ports. And we can use the enums. The first case will be port MIDI in, where we set MIDI in PDR. And we have to cast data location from void pointer to const lv2 atom sequence pointer. The second case will be port audio out where we set audio out PTR. And we can keep the casting to float pointer. All the other cases are control ports which we can handle in default. So we remove case 2. Then we check if the port number doesn't exceed the maximum, thus lower than port control plus control and R. And if this is true, then we assign our control PTR array member indexed by the control port number which is the port minus port control to data location casted to const float pointer. Activate is not needed anymore, so we can leave it empty. In run we firstly check again if all ports are connected. So we return immediately if audio out PTR or MIDI in PTR are null pointer. And the same for all control ports. The best way is to do this in a for loop. For int i is 0 as long as i lower than control number, increment i. And if control port is null pointer then return. Now we can analyze the incoming MIDI data in the MIDI port. There is a very useful macro in the atoms util.h file called lv2 atom sequence for each. This is a for loop heater that iterates through the sequence pointed by the first argument and defines and stores a pointer for each sequence member, this means lv2 atom events, in the second argument. So we copy and paste this macro and pass midi in ptr and the event pointer to be created. Let's call this one f for lv2 atom event. Inside the body we check if the effects body has got the type midi event. Here we use the URID we previously mapped. Then we get access to the MIDI message bytes using an unsigned int 8 bits pointer. Both the pointer and the content is constant and we call it message. And assign it with const uint 8t pointer casted f plus 1. What does this f plus 1 mean? f is a lv2 atom event pointer and thus a memory address. Plus 1 in the case of pointers means 1 times the size of the type where the other argument points to. In this case lv2 atom event. Let's take again a look to the MIDI event structure and take an account that an event is only defined by its timestamp and the lv2 atom head. Now we can see that f plus 1 points to the data block. We can also extract the type using lv2 MIDI message type and messages parameter. So we can react to different types of MIDI messages using switch type, at least to node on and node off, and these two are defined in the lv2 MIDI API. So we can type case lv2 midi message note on and the same with lv2 midi message note off. There's a third interesting one called lv2 midi message controller which may contain messages for switching off all. What will be inside the code blocks? Later. I mentioned before that all events, so also midi events, have got a timestamp. 
The timestamp in samples or frames relative to the actual buffer start is an unsigned integer and we can get access to it via the object where f points to and its member time.frames. Then we can play all old samples before this MIDI event with the old settings. Of course we still have to define play and last frame. Last frame will start at zero and will be updated to frame after playing. And after all we have to play the remaining samples. Now we can declare a private play method and we pass start and end as parameters. We copy and paste the declaration for the class method definition. Inside we have to iterate through the samples from the start to just before the end with a for loop as we already know, like in the run method in the last plugins we made. We will later define what's inside in the next video, but we can already remove the redundant loop from run. In the next video we will take a closer look what's going on in play and we will do something with the keys. Also watch the other videos in this series. For more information take a look into the LV2 tutorial github repository.